Hi and welcome to this uh, new video series on IUPAC nomenclature of organic compounds. Uh, in this, you will see a series of videos which covers uh, most of the organic molecules uh, and the system of nomenclature of uh, these based on the IUPAC system. And in this particular video, we're going to start with uh, the simplest, and they are the alkanes. Now, uh, we are all aware that the first four members of this series are named as methane, ethane, propane, and butane. So if you have something like CH4, the first member, we call it methane, and the second member, C2H6, is ethane. Then we have propane for three carbons. Then we have butane for four carbons. And as we know that alkenes have the general formula CnH2n plus two. Now these are the four names, which are very typical names. The names after the four carbons, that is C5, C6, C7, etc., they all follow a numerical term. C5, 5 is penta, and from penta we remove A and we insert A and E. 6 is hexa, we just put HEX, remove A and put A and E. Hepta, it is H-E-P-T. Remove the A, put A and E. So all these follow numerical terms except for the first four, which are typically named. So the first four saturated, unbranched, acyclic hydrocarbons are methane, ethane, and propane, and butane. And names of the higher members of the series will consist of a numerical term followed by AN with the removal of the term A from the numerical term that we saw. So here is a list of some of the um, alkenes. One is methane, two is ethane, three is propane, and so on. Eight is octane. And the important ones to look at are the 10, decane, and the 11, undecane. Again, 12, 13, 14 become a little more easier Dodecane, tridecane, tetradecane, pentadecane, etc. Et uh, et and if you look at uh, the 20, this is again very important. Icosane, we call it icosane. And the 21 becomes hen icosane, then docosane, then tricosane, etc. And here we have a list, list till 30, which is triacontane. And 31, which I have not shown right now, would follow the rule of 21. So 31 would be hen triacontane. And the 32 would be do triacontane, tri triacontane. And the same goes for 40, 50, etc. But we don't have to go for that many number of carbon atoms. So these are the list of certain simple and please remember saturated. That's why we call them as alkanes in the first place. They're saturated. There are no pi bonds in them. Unbranched. We are right now looking at only the unbranched system. Acyclic. Because we are not right now talking about cyclic alkanes. We're only talking about the acyclic ones. Hydrocarbons. Only carbon and hydrogen. And of course, alkanes only have carbon and hydrogen in them. So, now the next point is, there were some of the substituents certain common names are accepted as IUPAC names. And you must have typically heard of uh, compounds in which, you know, we can use the term ISO, we can use the term NEO. So I'm just going to briefly give you the easiest way of understanding when to name ISO and when to name NEO. Now, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume here that you know some basic uh, uh, rules of naming of organic compounds. Uh, uh, suppose we have an alkene like this, you know, we have, let's say, so many carbon atoms. We've got six of them. Now, just imagine that on the 
on this carbon atom, I've got a methyl group. Now again, one might wonder that we have not even done naming, so how do we know this is methyl? But I'm sure you must have some brief idea that if you have a side chain, which is an alkyl group or an alkane minus one edge, we call it alkyl group. So this is methane, we call it methyl group. Of course, we'll cover all of this uh, in a short while. But this explanation that I'm giving you is basically meant to make you understand how to name something as ISO or NEO or something like that. Now, when we name an organic compound, we know that we look at the longest chain and as we can see, this is the longest chain. So, and we number it from the side so that we get the lowest number for the side chain. Now, how would you name this? This would be 2-methylhexane, right? 2-methylhexane. Now, whenever you find an organic compound that can be named as 2-methylalkane, its common name will be isoalkane plus 1. Let me explain what is this alkane plus one. Here the alkane is hexane. So what is hexane plus one more carbon atom? Suppose you have one more group of carbon atom attached to hexane, you call it heptane. So this is going to be called isoheptane. So whenever you have a two methyl alkane, it can be called isoalkane plus one. The important thing to remember here is it has to be 2-methyl. It can't be 3-methyl. If this methyl were here in the third carbon, you can't call it iso or re or anything like that. So it has to be 2-methyl, number one. Number two, there should not be any other branching. So no other carbon should have any other side chain attached. It should be simply 2-methyl alkane. Then it can be called iso now that particular alkane increased by one more carbon, so alkane plus one. On the other hand, if suppose I have a series of six carbon atoms, and on this carbon atom I've got two methyl groups. Now how do you name this? One, two, three, four, five, six. You'll call it two, two, dimethyl hexane. Right. So whenever uh, an, an alkane can be named as 2,2-dimethylalkane, its common name would be NEO, alkane plus 2. That means you go by two carbon atoms. So this is hexane, so we add 2, that makes it octane. So this is neo-octane. So this is how you give, you look at uh, compounds with iso and neo. 2 methyl alkane, iso alkane plus 1. 2 2 dimethyl alkane, neo alkane plus 2. Again, remember, it has to be 2 comma 2. It can't be anything else. It has to be only di. It has to be only methyl. So if it is only 2,2-dimethylalkane, no other branching, nothing else, only then you call it neoalkane plus 2. So this is a very simple way of understanding where you can give iso and where we can give neo. The reason I'm talking about this right now is because for these, their common names are accepted as IUPAC names. For example, look at this one. Now what would you call it? Now at this point of time, I would want you to pause the video, write down what you think should be in terms of ISO and NEO, and then check the answer. Now obviously we can see the longest chain is one, two, three. Whether you do it this way or you do it this way, it doesn't matter. So you have uh, uh, one, two, three as the the longest carbon chain here. 
and how, what would you name this as in terms of IUPAC name? It could be called 2-methylpropane. So what would you call it in terms of ISO? It will be isopropane plus 1. That's isobutane. So the name is isobutane. Now what would you call this one? Again, I expect you to pause the video, write down your own name and check the answer. So if I were to number this, I'll say one, two, three, four, longest chain. And this is 2-methylbutane and that makes it isopentane. What about this one? Now, irrespective of which way you go, the longest chain has only three atoms. And it is 2,2-dimethylpropane. So we call it neopropane plus 2. That's neopentane. What would you call this one? Well, look at the longest chain. It's 2-methylpentane. So that makes it isohexane. So, for all the alkanes that have common names as isoalkane or neoalkane, their common names are accepted in the IUPAC names. You can also call them by their traditional IUPAC name like 2-methylbutane, 2-methylpentane, whatever. But their common names are also accepted in the IUPAC system. All right. Now let's look at the naming of alkanes. First, we locate the longest carbon chain. I'm sure we're aware of that. We've already seen that. And then the longest chain is numbered from one end to the other using Arabic numerals. And the numbering is to be done from that end where the first substituent gets the lowest number and so on. This is irrespective of the nature of the substituent. That means I've got an alkane, a huge chain of carbon atoms, and I got a lot of substituents here. Some of them having two carbon atoms, some of them having three carbon atoms, some of them having one carbon atom. It doesn't really matter. What you're going to do is once you identify the longest carbon chain, what you do is you number it from that end such that the first substituent, the substituent can also be called as side chain, or you can call it branching. If the first substituent or first side chain or first branch gets the lowest number, it is that direction which is chosen. If the first one matches on either end, go for the next one, and then go for the next one. And if all the the numbers match, then we will go further and look at how to number them. So, the next point that we're going to talk about is how to name the substituent. And as we've already seen, the names of substituents is the name of the corresponding alkane with the ane changed to il. For simple substituents, there exist fixed names. For complex substituents, the name is derived based on the general rules of naming with a carbon atom attached to the main carbon chain as one and then following the other rules. Now let me explain this. Suppose you have a single carbon atom side chain. Now it's methane. Remove the ane here and put the isle here. So instead of methane, it becomes methyl. Ethane becomes ethyl. So for simple ones, is pretty easy. But again, you must have noticed that sometimes we name the substituent also as iso, as neo, as secondary, as tertiary. So let's understand when do we do that. Now just imagine that I have a long carbon chain here. And in this, I have... And in fact, let, let me let me uh, draw this the vertical way. Suppose I've got a long carbon chain here. Now here I have a side chain, which has got a few carbon atoms like this. And you notice, 
and remember so this is the this is the parent chain this is the parent chain the longest chain and this is only a side chain so now you notice that in the side chain the numbering remember this is always carbon number one so suppose you notice that on the second last carbon there is a methyl group attached so we have a long carbon chain in the long carbon chain we have a side chain in the side chain this being the first carbon and this being the last carbon on the second last carbon you notice a methyl group and assume that there is no other branching here then this would be called iso and count the total number of carbons here and make it alkyl so this is one two three four five and including the methyl it is six so we call it isohexyl group try up one more what do you think this would be one two three four and including this this is five and on the second last carbon you got a methyl group it's isopentyl remember again there should be no other branching and the branching on the second last carbon has to be methyl it cannot be any other group so no other branching second last carbon having a methyl it's iso and can count the total number of carbon atoms so that's how iso is given now let's check one more suppose i have a long carbon chain i have a side chain like this on the second last carbon i notice two methyl groups assume there is no other branching no other branching on this side chain second last carbon only has two methyl groups count the total number of carbons this is five including the two methyls is six and seven totally seven it's heptyl and it will be called neo heptyl so remember second last carbon having one methyl is isoalkyl second last carbon having two methyl it's called neoalkyl now let's check one more i have a long carbon chain i have a side chain like this and i find that there is a methyl group on the very first carbon there are no other branchings no the groups attached on this particular side chain and i got one methyl group on the first carbon only one we call it secondary and count the total 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 number of carbons here it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 that makes it secondary heptyl so when do we call it secondary when the first carbon has one methyl group and no other branching but suppose this is the parent chain and this is the side chain and on the first carbon i notice two methyl groups and there is no other branching we call it tertiary 1 2 3 4 5 plus 2 7 it is tertiary heptyl group So we understand secondary, we understand tertiary, we understand iso, we understand neo. The complication comes up when the first carbon also happens to be the second last carbon. For example, I've got only two carbons here, and I got a carbon, a methyl group here. Now this carbon also is the first, is also the second last. from the point of view of second last i should call it isopropyl from the point of view of the first carbon i should i should call it secondary propyl we select isopropyl there's no particular logic to this 
because you got to have some particular rule anyway so here the ISO is chosen over secondary so remember if the first and the second last carbon happen to be the same and there is one methyl on the first carbon instead of calling it secondary propyl we call it isopropyl and then what happens if it has two of them second last carbon is also the first first carbon from the point of view of second last we call it tertiary and four carbon atom tertiary butyl and from the point of view of second last I mean from the point of view of the first it is tertiary butyl from the point of view of secondary last we should say it new butyl we select tertiary butyl here again there's no particular logic to this so this is something that we need to remember how to give the names of the side chains all right so let's get certain things done so what do we call this pause the video write down the name check for yourself whether your answer is correct or not of course this is very simple it's methane minus one H it's methyl this is ethane minus one H ethyl well this one is propane less than one H propyl group and let's start branching now now remember this is the carbon which is one this is this parent chain attached this bond represents the attachment so if this is the first carbon one and two the first carbon has a methyl the first is also the second last so again remember we have two options we can call it isopropyl based on the second last and based on the first we can call it secondary propyl and i already told you that we choose the term iso here so this is going to be isopropyl what do you think we call this one pause the video check for yourself this is carbon 1 this is carbon 2 this is carbon 3 the second last carbon has a methyl group the first one doesn't the second last one has a methyl group it's a iso thing and the total carbons are four iso butyl what do you call this one well carbon one carbon two carbon three longest chain of the side chain carbon one has a methyl group and that's not a second last so it's purely secondary total number of carbons of four secondary butyl well what do you call this one this is carbon one this is carbon two the first carbon has two methyl the first carbon also happens to be second last from the point of view of second last we call it neobutyl from the point of view of the first carbon we call it tertiary butyl and therefore we already know that we have taken the rule of tertiary butyl here try this one carbon 1 carbon 2 carbon 3 carbon 4 second last carbon has one methyl total carbons of 5 isopentyl group try a few more how about this one which is carbon 1 this one carbon 2 carbon 3 second last carbon has two methyl the first one doesn't so this is purely neo five of them try this one carbon 1 carbon 2 carbon 3 carbon 4 carbon 1 has two methyl groups and therefore it's tertiary and the total carbons are six it's tertiary hexyl try this one carbon one carbon two carbon three carbon four carbon five the totally six carbons and the second last carbon has a methyl group it's isohexyl 
So this is how we give the name of the side chains. But in case we are not able to give the names of the side chain, even using these, suppose there are multiple branches, then you use the same system of RUPAC that you use for the parent one. That means if this is the parent chain and there's a side chain like this, there's a methyl here, there's a methyl here, you cannot give it a simple name, you can't give it any ISO, you can't give it any NEO. So you name it, keeping this as one, two, three, four, and we call it two, three, dimethyl, and the longest chain is four, butyl. Not butane, it's butyl because this entire thing is a side chain. And the side chain will always end with alkyl. So it's 2,3-dimethylbutyl. The name of the alkane is written by first writing the names of all substituents and then following it up with the name of the parent alkane. The position of the substituents is indicated by Arabic numerals followed by a hyphen and then the name of the substituent. I'm sure we are clear on this part. If a substituent occurs more than once, then the prefixes like di, tri, tetra, etc. are used. Moreover, all of its positions must be indicated by Arabic numerals in increasing order, which are separated by a comma. That means if I have, let's say, methyl in several places, if I have, if I have two of them, I call it di, three of them, I call it tri, four of them, I call it tetra, and so on. And all the position numbers must be mentioned in the increasing order. So look for the methyl, the first, the, the, the methyl with the lowest number. Then go for the next, then for, go, for, go for the next. And you've got to even repeat a number if it occurs twice. For example, if I have something like this. Now here are the longest chain, this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I got uh, ethyl on 4, and I got 2 methyls on 2. So I'm going to call it 2 comma 2 dimethyl. Now one might wonder and say that when I'm already calling it dimethyl, doesn't it imply that it is a 2, the 2 of them are 2? No. Even if they were in different, different positions, we'll still call them as di. So 2 comma 2. So the number has to be repeated. Between two numerals, there is a comma. Between a numeral and an alphabet, there is a hyphen. Okay. So between a numeral and an alphabet, irrespective of the order, there will be a hyphen. And between two numerals, there would be a comma. Now, if a substituent is complex, I've already mentioned, but if this substituent occurs more than once, then this is indicated by new prefixes. For example, I have a long chain here, okay? I just imagine there is this side chain here, and the same side chain occurs somewhere else. Now, this side chain would be named as 2, 2 dimethyl butyl. And even this one has the same name. And let's say this occurs at position 3, this occurs at position 7, or so on. So I'm going to call it 3, 7. But I'm not going to use the prefix di now. I'm going to use a new prefix. I'm going to say bis. The reason being that these complex substituents themselves have the di or the tri or the tetras in them. So I'm call it bis and then I'm going to write the name. If it is three, it is tris, four, it's tetrakis, five, it's pentakis, and so on. And here the name of the substituent is written in brackets. You have two options of writing it. So I can write it as bis 2 comma 2 dimethyl butyl. Forgive my handwriting, it's pretty bad, I know. Or you have an option of saying 37 bis. Don't put the bracket, but then put a high 
put each number becomes prime. Two prime, two prime, and there's a hyphen here. Two prime, two prime, dimethyl butyl. So if you want to write it in unprimed numerals, use brackets. If you want to use prime numerals, you don't have to use brackets there. So if a substituent is complex, and uh, and if such a substituent substituted in the same way occurs more than once, then it is indicated by the prefixes bis, tris, tetracus. Here the name of the substituent is either written in brackets with unprimed numerals, no hyphen between prefix, the prefix and the bracket, or without brackets with prime numerals, hyphen between the prefix and the primed numeral. The names of the substituents are written in the alphabetical order. For selecting alphabetical order, the multiplying prefixes are not considered unless they form the part of the name. Prefixes ISO, NEO are used, but secondary and tertiary are not used except when they are compared with each other. So if I have ethyl somewhere, if I have methyl somewhere, ethyl will always precede methyl. Even if this is triethyl and this is dimethyl, because we're not going to use the D and the T for comparison. We are going to use the E of the ethyl, M of the methyl. Now, if we have the, uh, the isos and the neos, of course, the iso I need to be considered, neo N has to be considered, but for secondary and tertiary, we don't consider the S or the T. So secondary butyl, tertiary hexyl have to be considered based on B and H, not based on S and T. Though it might lead to the same thing, but we need to consider the B of the butyl and the H of the hexyl. But if you have a secondary something and tertiary the same thing, let's say I have a secondary uh, heptyl and a tertiary heptyl. Then I have to consider S and T. Now, if two substituents have identical names, then, but with different substitutions, now this is pretty important, then that is cited first, which gets the lowest number while numbering the longest chain. Say, for example, longest chain is here. I got a substituent like this and I got a substituent like this now what would you name this side chain as it's going to be one two three four it's going to be three metal butyl whereas this guy is going to be two metal butyl now you want to figure out which one should I name first because if you look at the alphabetical order both are methyl butyl. Then we cite that one first, which occurs with the lowest number in the parent chain. So in the parent chain, this got a number three. Or let's say this got a number two and this got a number three. Then we need to cite three methyl butyl before two methyl butyl. So that is cited first, which gets the lowest number while numbering the longest chain. So we need to remember that point. If for such substituents, a choice in numbering exists, then priority is given in numbering is given to the substituent with the lowest locant at the first point of difference. Now here, let me just go back a little bit. I'll explain this rule. Suppose I got this and i got this one i got this one and let us assume that while i number i get two here and five here and i number it backwards i get two here and five here and these are the only two substituents now one might wonder that since i get the same numbers in both cases which numbering should i choose now here the numbering itself is an issue so here you choose that side chain for the lowest number, which itself has the lowest substituent. Otherwise, one has to follow the alphabetical order. 
But since the, here the alphabetical order is not going to be working because both are methyl butyl. So one will not be able to decide whether I need to give this one as 2 or 5 or this one as 2 or 5. So what we do here in this particular case is we give 2 here, 5 here just because this is 2 methyl and this is 3 methyl. So the next rule says if for such substituents a choice in numbering exists then priority in numbering is given to the substituent with the lowest locant at the first point of difference and if such substituents occur on the same carbon then that is cited first which has the lowest locant at the first point of difference again when you want to do you know the numbering you've done the numbering and you want to know which one I should write first? Well, first write the one with the lowest number. But suppose both of them occur the same. Let's uh, go back a little bit. I explain this. I got this. Now here on the same carbon, I have this situation. Now what do I do? And let's say this is carbon number two. This is 2 methyl butyl, this is 3 methyl butyl, and both occur on the same number. So, which one do I name first? Well, I name this one first because it has got the lowest number locant here 2 methyl instead of 3 methyl. So, that is point number 13. Point number 14. If a chain numbered in more than one way gives the same position numbers, but for different substituents, then that numbering is chosen in which lower number occurs for the substituent, which is cited first alphabetically. So this we have already done. So if I have ethyl here and methyl here, and this gets two, this gets five, go backwards, this gets two, this gets five, then I give the lowest number to the one which is superior in alphabetical order and remember the first alphabet of any name is a capital letter all others are small and you can't give a space in alkanes at all while naming alkanes no space is given anywhere now I'm going to give you some examples of complex substituents complex side chains and I want you to name them so complex substituents are named following all the above rules for naming. For example, let's look at this one. Again, pause the video and write down the name for yourself and then check with the answer. So obviously, go for the longer. Remember, this is these are substituents. These are side chain. The parent chain is somewhere here. Okay. So this is carbon. One, two, three, four. I've chosen this as one only because it is attached to the parent chain. So what would you call this? It's two methyl butyl. Try this one. Pause the video now. This is one, two, three, four. 2,3 dimethyl butyl. Try this. One, two, three, four, five. This is the longest chain. Two, three dimethyl pentyl. Try this one. What are you going to call this one? Pause the video. Check for yourself. One, two, three, four. Now, after 4, I can go 5, 6 here or 5, 6 here. 5, 
six here or five six here it doesn't make any difference so I number it this way so what do you have in five methyl and what do you call this one remember this substituent we did before this is carbon one this is carbon two carbon one has one methyl group from the point of view of second last, we call it iso. From the point of view of the first one, we call it secondary, and we choose isopropyl. So now, which one comes first, isopropyl or methyl? Isopropyl comes first. So it's four isopropyl, five methyl, and the total uh, and, and the straight chain has six carbon atom hexyl. So this is four isopropyl, five methyl hexyl. Now comes the trickiest part. How do I select the parent chain if more than one type of parent chain exists? That's the most crucial part here. And this is, this is the part which could even be a little bit confusing. So please pay attention. If more than one chain competes for selection of the parent chain and they are different, then the order of selection is as follows. The chain that has greatest number of side chains. For example, look at this one. Now, which could be my parent chain? Now, I want you to look for the parent chain yourself, pause the video, write the name, and then check the answer. The parent chain could be this. Can you see the red colored lines? Now, in this, how many side chains do I have? One, two. So if I choose, this is a parent chain, I've got two side chains. And in this parent chain, how many carbons do I have? One, two, three, four, five. So five carbons in my parent chain with two side chains. Look at this one. How many carbons do you have? One, two, three, four, five. Again, five. But how many side chains do I have? Only one. The side chain itself has many side chains, but we're not looking at that. In the parent chain, how many side chains do you have? One. So we're not going to select this one. We are going to go with this. And how do we number them? Well, if I number them as a one here, but I think I can show it to you. One, two, three, four, five. Because if I number it the reverse way, my first side chain comes at three. If I go this way, my fight, first fight, uh, side chain comes at two. So this is going to be three ethyl, two methyl pentane. The ethyl first because of the alphabetical order. Try this one. Look at the parent chain, name the alkene. Pause the video, try for yourself, then play and then you'll get the answer. The parent chain could be this. How many carbons do we have? We have seven carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In fact, my parent chain could even be this one, the blue one. How many atoms? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But how many side chains do I have? How many black lines do I get from here? Three of them. And how many black lines did I get in this parent chain? I mean, this is also, of course, a parent chain. How many uh, black lines do you get? You get two here. Now, just check this out. If this were the parent chain, how many black lines did you get? One, two, three, four. If you looked at this way, 
How many did you get? Black lines. One, two, three. And if you considered it this way, how many did you get? One, two. There are three different parent chains for com competing for selection, all having seven, seven carbon atoms. But one of them has four side chain. One has three, the other has two. We go with the largest side chain. This is the parent chain. How do we number them? Well, the lowest number can only come from the right side. And that makes it 4 has a propyl, 2, 3, 5 has a methyl, and methyl comes before propyl. So it's 2, 3, 5, trimethyl, 4 propyl heptane. But now let us suppose i got two different parent chains and both have the same number of side chains yet they're different then we go for the second option the chain whose substituents get the lowest number let's check try numbering this i mean naming this and then Click pause and then play after you name it. Look at all the chains properly, all the parent chains possible, and then try and name this. And once you get it, then play. Now look, one parent chain is this. Now how many black lines do you get from this red one? We get three of them, right? And if I were to number this, how would I number this? Obviously from the right side. So let me call this as a red chain. And I've got branchings at 2, position 2, position 4, position 5. So red chain branching at 2 methyl, 4 isobutyl and 5 methyl. Look at this side chain. I mean, look at this particular parent chain. How many carbons do we get? Again, seven. How many black lines do we get out of this? Three. We got one here. We got one here. We got one here. Three of them. So the parent chains are different, yet I'm getting the same number of branching. So the first option could not help me. So I number this one. I call it the blue chain. And where all do I get the branching? Two, four, and five. So this is same as the red chain. So this doesn't give us a different name. So let's try something else. How about this one? The green chain. How many black lines do you get from here? Three. How do you number it? Well, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Doesn't matter how you number it. You get the same substituent of the same numbers. So let's say I number it this way. Where are my numbers? My numbers are at 2, 4, and 6 instead of 2, 4, and 5. So we select those numbers. 2, 4, 5 versus 2, 4, 6. So we look at and we write them in the increasing order. And wherever you get the lowest number at the first point of difference, that is chosen. So we select the red chain. Red and the blue chain would be the same. All right, so let's name it. What is the substituent at two? The, uh, I mean, so, so, so which is the parent one now? Let's get back to the parent one. The parent chain is this. Numbering is done this way. 
and the one sitting at two and five is methyl the one sitting at four look at this one name it one two three this is the second last carbon i got a second last carbon methyl group and therefore that makes it an isobutyl group so this is four isobutyl two five dimethyl heptane and now let's have some more complications both of these cannot help us now this is going to be the most complex of all hydrocarbon chains that you got to name it so be very very patient be very very careful you'll be able to get this the chain having greater number of carbon atoms in the smaller side chains that means the first one fails the second number fails that means if we use the first one which says maximum number of side chain that doesn't help if you go by the second one which says okay they should get the lowest number even that doesn't work look at this one in this one i want you to first of all look for all the possible parent chains draw the structure as many times as you want as many times as you can though it is complicated very complicated but then you got to get this right now let's look at it very patiently you try to get all the parent chains and pause the video and then you can get it back first parent chain the red one uh so there are so many carbon atoms that we have to actually I have to number it and when i number it i notice that i can number it from either end you know i can write this as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 
is this being the parent chain is same as this being the parent chain is same as this being the parent chain but we got more look at this one the green chain now this is different because you notice there is no ethyl substitution here so in this how do we do the numbering well actually the numbering doesn't matter here you can do either way so how many carbon atoms do you have in this parent chain again 13 doesn't help you much how many substitutions you got well how many black lines are coming out one two three four five six again and where are they coming at same positions three five twice at seven nine eleven so green chain 13 carbon atoms substitutions at position third three five seven seven nine and eleven but the number of carbons are different because at three you have got one carbon five you got one carbon seven you have eight at seven again you have nine at nine you got one and eleven and you got one now there could be other possibilities and this is again a purple chain this resembles the green one because as you notice there is no ethyl substitution and you, if you just check and do all the numbering it remains the same so now what we do again this is again a purple chain same as the green chain so effectively there are only two types of parent chains here the red and the green one you can you can check all possibilities so now how do i go for the naming should i go for the red chain or the green chain this is the way to do it in the red chain write the number of carbons in each side chain in the increasing order for example i got a two carbon side chain one 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 how many ones do i have three of them so write three ones together then write two and both of these are eight so write eight eight so the red chain write the number of carbons in each side chain of each parent chain in the increasing order so i got one 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 for this one for this one for this two for this eight for this eight for this in the increasing order do the same for green chain in the green chain if you remember the green chain it was this one you got one 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 you got four ones here and this one has nine carbon atoms and this one has eight carbon atoms so this would be four ones and the eight and the nine in the increasing order and remember the logic the chain having greater number of carbon in the smaller side chain so out of these two where do you get the largest number at the first point of difference the red chain one one matching one one matching one one matching but this is two and this is one the fourth numbers are different so go for the higher one so the red chain is selected select the chain with the higher number of higher number the first point of difference so back to the red one now see how complicated this one is and the numbering and how do you number this well what is the side chain the side chains both side chains are same one two three in fact let me number the side chains also so that you can check the numbering both side chains by the way are the same type both are 2 4 dimethyl hexyl so write down the number uh, write down the name now 
so the first one to come should be now when you when the parent uh, uh, i mean when the side chain itself uses the prefix die or try or whatever then the d has to be used because that forms a part of the complex side chain here the die methyl is not indicating that this particular side chain is twice so it's going to be 7,7 bis 2 for dimethyl hexyl 3 ethyl 5911 trimethyl tridecane and if you don't put the brackets you put the prime values and if you feel this is a little bit complex go back go to it slowly do it take your time and then try and figure this out and the last complication comes when even this doesn't work then we go for the chain with the least branched side chain but none of the first three work for example look at this one doesn't seem to stop well look at this parent chain red one how many carbons do you have you got 12 number them like this now in the red chain there are 12 carbon atoms and they are uh, and, and the branches are at position 5 and 6 the branching at 5 contains 3 carbons the branching at 6 contains 8 carbons I'm trying I'm saying all of this because the first three won't work so this is the side chain containing three carbon atoms this is the side chain totally containing eight carbon atoms so red chain contains 12 carbons the branchings are at five this one and six this one the two branches and the branchings themselves are such that one side chain has no branching whereas the other side chain has one branching now remember we're looking at the branching of the branch so red chain at five zero branching at six one branching okay let's get rid of this one there's one more parent chain competing for selection blue number it where do you see the branching five and six again this doesn't give you anything how many carbons are there at five three how many carbons are there at six eight Therefore, this doesn't help us at all. So we write the side chain here. And if you notice, there's one difference. Both side chains are branched at one place. So blue chain, 12 carbon atoms, same. And at side chain 5, 1 branching, side chain 6, 1 branching, we have to go with the least branch chain. That means we look at these numbers 0 and 1. 0 branching, 1 branching, 1 branching, 1 branching. We have to go with the least branched side chain. We go for 0 and 1. So it is the red chain that we need to consider. numbering is done this way side chain numbering is done this way and then you can write the name for yourself at six we have uh, one isopropyl pentyl and at five we have propyl 
so iso i wins over so the name is 6 1 isopropyl pentyl 5 propyl dodecane there are 12 carbon atoms or 6 1 prime isopropyl pentyl 5 propyl dodecane so this is how we name alkanes we have tried to go from very simple ones to very complex ones and it takes a little bit but a bit of time to get through all of this and understand all of this so take your time sufficient time watch the video as many times as you want uh, but this is the maximum level of complexity you can ever reach so this particular video covers all complexities in the naming of alkanes now for you the need may not be to go to this particular level so you can stop at whichever stage you feel convenient or required with that I thank all of you for watching this particular video and in the next video we'll use some more compounds and we'll see how to name them in the IUPAC system of nomenclature. Thank you.